Here I have a very simple logic circuit. It's a push button and a NOT gate powering an LED. When I press the button, the input goes to logic 1, the output goes to logic 0, the LED goes off. When I let go of the button, the input goes to logic 0, the output goes to logic 1, the LED comes on. Fantastic. We can see that in terms of voltages. My power supply voltage is 9 volts, and my output at the moment is not quite 9 volts. And the reason is because inside the chip there is a resistance, it's called the internal resistance, and when current flows through the LED, some voltage is dropped across the internal resistance. But 7.6 volts is still good enough to be logic 1, and it's still good enough to light the LED. Now I want to make a brighter light, so I'm going to remove the LED, and I'm going to add a bulb. Plug it in. I expect to get a nice bright light. And instead of getting a nice bright light, I get no light. Let's have a look and see why. So when I've got my input is logic 0, my output should be logic 1, but it's only 0.14 volts. The bulb is effectively short-circuiting the output of the logic gate. The logic gate cannot provide enough current to power the bulb. So I need to do something about this. I need to add a transducer driver, and I'm going to use a MOSFET. Here's my new circuit, and I've added a MOSFET. And as you can see, the bulb's lighting up. Let's add a MOSFET. If only electronics was that easy. So here's my MOSFET symbol. Here's my bulb. And as you can see, it's directly connected to the logic gate with this green wire here. Let's see if it works. Press the button, bulb goes off. Let the button go, bulb comes on. Looking at the voltage on the output, it's much closer to 9 volts than it was before. This is a very good logic one because the MOSFET takes no current from the NOT gate and therefore the NOT gate has no voltage drop across its internal resistance. Now what I've done is I've taken away the logic circuit. Durum. And I've left myself with just the MOSFET and the bulb. And I'm going to demonstrate something quite interesting. At the moment, the MOSFET, the bulb is off, and I'm going to connect the gate of the MOSFET to zero, and the bulb stays off. Now I'm going to connect the gate of the MOSFET to positive, and the bulb comes on. So this shows us when the gate voltage is connected to 9 volts, the bulb is on. When the gate voltage is attached to zero, the bulb is off. I'm going to disconnect it from 9 volts, and the bulb stays on. This is very unusual. The bulb should go off, ideally, because there's no voltage supply attached to the gate. But the problem is the gate has a very high resistance, and once it's charged up, it remains charged up. So the only way to turn it off reliably is to reconnect it back to ground. I can do an interesting trick with this. With my hand, I'm holding onto the power supply off camera. So that's me holding onto the positive supply. And all I need to do is touch the gate, and it turns on the bulb. Now I'm holding onto the 0 volt supply off camera, and I touch the gate with my hand, and it turns off. My own resistance is enough of a connection to turn the MOSFET on or off. And once it's on, it stays on. As you can imagine, this adds a level of unreliability. So what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can plug in a resistor between the gate and ground. This is called a pull-down resistor. And it will have a large value, maybe 1 mega ohm. And now, when I attach my wire to positive, the MOSFET works. And when I disconnect it from positive, the MOSFET goes off, as I would expect. So far, we've found that this MOSFET device requires a voltage at the gate, which is the green wire. And the interesting question is, how much voltage does it need to actually turn the MOSFET on? So I've organized a potential potentiometer, a voltmeter connected to the gate. 
and I've dispensed with the pull-down resistor, which I did have attached to the gate because the potentiometer is being that pull-down resistor. Let's find out how much voltage is required to make the MOSFET conduct. So not one volt because it's clearly not conducting. Not even 2 volts is enough to turn the MOSFET on. Still not conducting. Not even 3 volts is enough to turn the MOSFET on. Still not conducting. This would be a problem if you had a 3 volt power supply from a pair of AA batteries. Your MOSFETs would never turn on. And there we go. It requires just about 4 volts to turn the MOSFET on. And if I go up to higher voltages, nothing else happens. It just stays turned on. This voltage is called the threshold voltage. The threshold voltage is around about 4 volts for this particular MOSFET, although other MOSFETs have different threshold voltages. While I'm here, I'd like to tell you a cautionary tale. It appears that I can use my gate voltage to dim my bulb. I can make a light controller. But please don't do this, because all the power that's not being dissipated in this bulb is now being dissipated in this MOSFET. So the MOSFET's just going to get hot. Okay, MOSFETs should really work either fully on or fully off, and then they're not going to get too hot. In that position, the MOSFET is acting as a resistor, and it's going to get warm. Ow! Yes, it actually gets hot.